Hello, my name is Carter Kirkable, and I have a show called Catching Up with Carter on Thursdays from 10 to 11 a.m. on Saddleback College Radio 88.5 HD2. Check out and subscribe down below if you'd like to see more recordings of this show and to see my NFL and college football takes. Did you miss your football games this week? Do you need to catch up? Welcome to Catching Up with Carter here on Saddleback College Radio. Thursdays at 10, he will recap it all. Hello and welcome to Catching Up with Carter here on Saddleback College Radio here on 88.5 HD2. And today we have a very, very special just show for you all as the Vikings. They are 5-0. and We are going to talk all about that. But first, welcome to Catching Up with Carter where we recap all Los Angeles sports and sometimes some others. As you heard, I'm going to be talking about the Minnesota Vikings a lot today. And we will cover the Rams, Chargers, Raiders, and 49ers games. And for college, we will cover USC, UCLA, and of course, Saddleback College Football. And we were just listening to I Really Want to Stay at Your House by Rosa Walton and Haley Coggins from a great show, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. You should go watch it. Very, very good. And our next song is Turn It Up by Cochise. And again, you're listening to Catching Up with Carter here on 88.5 HD2 Saddleback College Radio. I'll be back with all of our NFL takes right after this song. Rams, Chargers, 49ers, Raiders, USC, UCLA, and of course, Saddleback Football. He covers it all. It's Carter Kirkable, your Saddleback student sports voice. Hello and welcome back to Catching Up with Carter here on Saddleback College Radio 88.5 HD2. And we're going to get right into our football recap. We're going to start with the Los Angeles Rams. And for the Rams, I just got to say, it's been just a struggling few weeks. I know they beat the Niners uh, just a few weeks ago, but this last week against the Packers was not so great. For our prediction, we had Rams versus Packers. They played at 1.25 p.m. 28-21 to 21 Packers was our prediction last week, and the final score was 24-19 to 19 Packers. So I would say that prediction is nice. A pretty nice prediction, I'd say. It was pretty close, but we'll go through a little bit of a game recap here. So it starts off. Packers, they get a deep pass to Jalen Reed. This is a crazy play to start the game. Sets a short run up for Josh Jacobs. He starts the game 7-0. Packers are up right away. Then a good first drive for the Rams. They go all the way down the field, and they go for it on fourth and goal. Does not end up getting that conversion, ending up being 7-0 still. Then the Packers punt, giving the ball back to the Rams. That ends the first quarter. Then the Rams, they drive it all the way down behind Kyron Williams and Blake Corum. Blake Corum had a very good game this week. He played an integral role right behind Kyron Williams. Very, very good job from him. And they get a rushing touchdown from Kyron Williams to tie it at 7. So it is 7-7 to here. And then the Packers have to punt. Rams punt it back to them. Then the Rams, they get a pick 6 off of Jordan Love to extend the lead to 13-7. to but they do miss that extra point. As you could tell, there's that weird discrepancy. Kickers this year have been just kind of off. I don't know what's going on. There's been a lot of missed, missed extra points. We'll talk about a kicker getting hurt later today with the 49ers. But that's a different story. And moving after that, the Packers then score a field goal right before halftime to bring it a little closer, 10-13. to 13. So the Rams, they are up. They're up by three points. You're thinking here, how did this game kind of get out of hand and... We'll see after this as halftime, Kyron, he fumbles the ball. And right away, that gives the momentum all the way to the Packers. And Tyler Craft, he catches a long touchdown and scores to take the lead 17 to 13. Then Stafford, he forces a pass and throws an interception, turning the ball over. Then the Packers, they score to extend the lead even more, 24 to 13. Then that's the end of the third quarter. Then the Rams, they have to punt. Packers have to punt it back. Then the Rams get a touchdown late to bring it closer, but go for two and miss, and it's 19-24. to And as you can tell, that's the end of the game. As the Packers, they punt it back. The Rams then go for it on fourth down and turn the ball over. And the Packers hold on to the win. They get the win this week. Rams just struggling. I don't, I don't know really what to say. Nakua and Cooper Cup are still out, so we'll have to see what happens. And rumor says that Nakua could return in Week 8. And the Packers' defense, they showed the weakness just 
of these missing pieces. So they have a bye week. So thankfully they'll be able to recover. Maybe Cooper Cup will be back. Next, we're going to be talking about the Chargers. Now, for Chargers fans, we don't have a lot to talk about as they had a bye week this last week. But we'll talk about a little bit of news and, of course, the game that's going to happen next. And so it is a bye week for the Los Angeles Chargers. They got to recover. Joe Alt, he was limited in practice, but maybe back in this coming week against the Broncos. And so this next game, we're going to talk about this a little bit. The Chargers play on October 13th. They play against the Broncos at 1.05 p.m. The Chargers, I believe they're going to win this game. I think 24-20. to That's, I think, what the final score is going to be. I think the Chargers are going to win this game. I think Justin Herbert's going to come out, play very well. And Bo Nix, I still think he'll do fine, but he didn't really play that well last week and against the Jets I just didn't I just didn't really really see what was going on there like when he played against the Jets and barely scored any points I just didn't really like that he played better this week but it just did not look very good and I think Justin Herbert himself is going to do great I think he'll kind of take over this game kind of take it by himself in my opinion I think he's going to throw some some good passes and I think Joshua Palmer will step up and Quinton Johnston he's been showing promise as well so that's really the the end of our Chargers recap there because they didn't really have a game this week. So they had that bye, good recovery. Hopefully they'll be back. Next, we're going to be going right into the Las Vegas Raiders. Raider Nation, stand up. And so now we're going to go into a little bit actually about the Broncos because the Raiders did play the Broncos at 1.05 p.m. and the Broncos won. And they won 34 to 18. And our prediction was 21 to 17. Broncos. So that prediction was nice. It's a pretty nice prediction there. And so for the Broncos, they just kind of took over this game just pretty much in the second half. I'll go through a little bit of a recap here. As the Raiders, they start off, Brock Bowers, he gets a jumping catch for 57 yards and a touchdown to start 7-0. Brock Bowers is showing why he was supposed to be picked in the first round. Very, very good touchdown early and just a just a great game from him in general. Then the Broncos, they start with a punt. Raiders then settle for a field goal, 10-0. So at the end of the first quarter, it's 10-0. Remember, they have no Devontae Adams on offense and Gardner Minshew is still playing quarterback in this first half. Later, he does actually end up getting benched. We'll go into that later. Broncos then get a field goal to bring it to 3-10. to 10. Then Minshew, he throws in a 100-yard. Let me get that straight. A 100-yard pick six to Patrick Sertan to tie the game at 10. 100 yards. So he threw it right to him in the end zone, and he had a 100-yard pick six. Absolutely wild. Then the Raiders, they have to punt after that. Then Denver punts it back. Raiders punt it back. And the Broncos finally get a field goal. It's 13-10. to 10. They take the lead. They score 13 points in the second quarter. Just not good defense from the Raiders during that second quarter of play. Then going into the second half, the Broncos start off with a punt. Then the Raiders have to punt back, and they get a great return. The Broncos get a great return off that kick. And then the Broncos, they score a touchdown to extend the lead 20-10. to 10. Then Minshew throws yet another interception on third down, turning the ball over. And the Broncos get a wide-open touchdown, but actually that wide-open touchdown ends up being dropped. You have to go watch that back. It is a deep touchdown pass from Bo Nix. Very, very good pass, but just slips out of the hands and does not get that touchdown for them. And then the Raiders, they punt, and this is when they sub in AOC, Aiden O'Connell, and that ends the third quarter. Then Bo Nix, he scores off a jump touchdown to extend the lead even further for the Broncos, 27-10. Then Patrick Sertan picks off AOC off a bobbled throw. So really, it doesn't really matter who which quarterback is in. The Broncos were just getting interceptions left and right. Then the Broncos, they get a touchdown to Josh Reynolds, 34-10 now. And then finally, a touchdown does end up happening for the Raiders. They do have a good drive. AOC shows some promise, has some good passes. And they get a touchdown to Amir Abdullah. They get the two-point conversion. It's 
18 to 34, then punting back and forth. The Broncos then run out the clock. Really, that was it. There really wasn't anything there, but it looks like AOC will be the starter. I, I don't, I don't, do not think that Minshew will be coming back um, to play pretty much because AOC he looked pretty decent even with that interception. And Max Crosby, he is back. He had a good game, had a few sacks, but there's still question marks around Devontae Adams. We don't know is he going to be a Raider still. Really doesn't look like it at all. He looks like he'll be traded, but we don't know where that destination is. We have no clue what they're going to get for him. And so the next game is Raiders versus Steelers. They play at 1.05 p.m. And the Steelers, I believe they're going to win this game. I think they're going to bounce back after the loss this last week. And I think 20-10. to 10. I don't think the Raiders are going to score that many points. I, I'm sorry, Raiders fans. I just don't see it happening. I love, I love just AOC coming in, but I don't think he's going to really do anything. I think it's just going to be the same old Raiders, and I think Shadur Sanders sorry, is probably going to be the number one overall pick, and it might be to the Raiders as they might trade up or have that number one overall pick based off of what's going on right now. Next, we're going to be moving into the 49ers. And now for the 49ers, they played the Cardinals this week at home at 1.05 p.m. The 49ers won. Or no, sorry, they didn't win. That was my prediction. The 49ers win 28 to 10, and it ended up, I wish they won. The, the actual final score was 24 to 21. The Cardinals won. So the Cardinals proving my 49ers wrong. And so that prediction was Try. It was just absolutely trash and so we'll just go through this recap here as a 49ers fan this is just kind of devastating to be honest of a game it's just not what you want to see from the 49ers so right away Kyler Murray starts with a rushing touchdown to go up 7-0 49ers do get a field goal 3-7 then the Cardinals are forced to punt Purdy then finds Kittle for a touchdown 10-3 taking an early lead in that first quarter having a good momentum on their side Cardinals then get a field goal and they tie it just at 10 it is it is 10-10 here and the 49ers they get a field goal of their own 13 to 10 then the 49ers get a blocked field goal and return it for a touchdown it's Al Shair just a great play there and brings the lead to 10 points just a great start for the 49ers and then Kyler throws an interception to Nick Bosa seems like it's the game of, of, of just their life basically the 49ers just having a great defensive game and then ends up earlier in the game Jake Moody he gets a high ankle sprain. He is out, and Mitch Wisnowski comes in, and he actually hits a field goal for the 49ers. So he did all right there, but during the rest of the game, we could have used a lot of those field goals because multiple fourth down conversions were not got because he was. they were down in the red zone, and they just could not kick because they had no kicker. And next after that, Purdy then throws an interception right after halftime off a deflection. Cardinals get a field goal off it. It's 13-23. to 23. Then the 49ers have to go for it without a kicker and turn the ball over on downs, just like what I was saying before, and that ends the third quarter. Then Kyler Murray finds his tight end in the back of the end zone, and James Conner gets a two-point conversion, and it's 21-23. to 23. The 49ers are still up. And then Jordan Mason in the red zone fumbles the ball and gives the ball back to Arizona. Gives it back to them. And Arizona then goes down and gets a field goal to take the lead 24-21. to And the Cardinals get an interception off of Brock Purdy to end the game. It was just not at all what I was expecting from this game. The Niners just did not play well. Cardinals outplayed them in every aspect of the game. And going through some news, Chris McCaffrey is still placed, placed on IR. And it's just a bad game from Purdy. Multiple interceptions. That was three on the game. And Moody is now out. So we'll have to see. Maybe they get a new kicker. Hopefully hopefully they do because those fourth down conversions were not happening. It was fourth and 23 and we're going for it inside the red zone. And it's just, it's not good. And it's a prediction tonight. 49ers play the Seahawks at 5.15 p.m. Thursday night football. And I still believe, I'm still going to believe, I, I am a, I'm a biased 49ers fan. I still believe that we're going to win 28-21. to 21. I think it'll be closer, but I'm biased. I think the Niners are going to win. If I'm actually going to be realistic, I probably are going to lose. But that's my prediction. 49ers win 28-21 in this game. That is the end of our NFL recap for all of our Los Angeles teams. Next, we're going to be going into USC and UCLA. We'll be going through their games this weekend. But before that, we are going to be listening to Nang's by Tame Paula. My name is Carter Kirkhavel. You're listening to Catching Up with Carter here on Saddleback College Radio 88.5 HD2.
Hello and welcome back to Saddleback College Radio here on 88.5 HD2. My name is Carter Kirkaval and we're listening here to Catching Up with Carter and we're getting right into our college football recap. You were just listening to Nangs by Tame Paula. Very, very good song. And so we're going to get right into it with the USC Trojans. And now for the USC Trojans, they played against the Minnesota Gophers at 4.30 p.m. on Saturday. And so our prediction was 28-21. to USC wins, keeping just the, basically their playoff hopes alive. They were having a very, very good start to this season. And it ended up the final was 24-17. to The Gophers won. If you watch this game, this is one of the best college football games of this year. So we're going to go through the score drives for both teams. As the Gophers, they start the game with a field goal, and it's 3-0. to zero. That is the end of the first quarter. Then Moss, he finds Deuce Robinson in the back of the end zone, 7-3. to three. Miller Moss, having a good start to the season, gets that touchdown right away and a good start to this game. Then the Gophers, they score a touchdown off a QB sneak to respond. It's 10-7. Then USC gets a field goal to tie it right at half. It is 10-10 going into halftime. A good first half for both teams. Then Woody Marks, he gets a rushing touchdown off a direct snap off the Wildcat formation. 17-10. That's the end of the third quarter. Then the Gophers, they score off a read option to tie it at 17. Then the Gophers, they get the ball back and score off a QB sneak on fourth and goal to take the lead 24 to 17. If we go back, I just I just want to kind of give just a little bit of insight from watching this game. When you're watching this game, it's third and goal. They go for it. They get stuffed on the goal line. At the one yard line, they get stuffed. Then they go for it again on fourth down. Instead of kicking the field goal, instead of kicking it, PJ Fleck. Is just crazy. He decides, okay, we're going to go for it again and goes for it and gets it off the QB sneak. And so just basically saying, I'm winning this thing. USC, get out of my way. And so then Moss, he throws an interception to Minnesota late into the end zone, trying to find Deuce Robinson in the end zone. And that's it. USC loses this game. It's, it's crazy. And so it's just, I can't really say anything about this game. USC should have won. They should have won this game. And Minnesota, they proved them wrong. Minnesota just played well. They played out of their minds at home. So just a great game from the Gophers all around. They play UCLA next week, or actually this weekend. And so it should be very exciting. I will actually be at that game. So it'll be very exciting to go and see that. We'll talk a little bit more once we get into UCLA. But for USC, they play Penn State at 12.30 p.m. on Saturday. And I am an optimistic person. I am very optimistic. I think USC bounces back. I think 28-21. to 21, I think the exact same prediction against Minnesota. I think it's going to be against Penn State. Penn State played very well against UCLA, but I do think USC will beat Penn State this weekend. I think they'll be a very, very good and close matchup, but I think USC will prove Penn State wrong and win that game. And now we're going to be moving into UCLA. And for UCLA, they played against Penn State at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Our prediction was 28 to 10 Penn State wins. And the final score was 27 to 11 Penn State wins. So I'd say that was a pretty, pretty good just... I'd say just pretty good score there. I think we did a pretty good job with predicting that game. And so just for this just game recap, there were just no scores in the first quarter. Just a just a struggling just first part of this game. And I just I didn't really understand what was going on just with them. I I just it made no sense to me. I just it, it, it was really bad from both sides. I, I really don't know what to say from that. And so just 
in general, bad first quarter for both teams. Then Penn State, they score off a QB sneak to take the first points, 7-10. to The Bruins then find life off a long pass to Harden, but they settle for a field goal. It's 3-7. to Then Penn State, they get a touchdown right before half to the tight end Warren, 14-3. to So they take an early lead. That first quarter was really a fluke. In the second quarter, they took it. And then after halftime, Penn State, they start with a field goal. Then they get another touchdown off a run up the gut, and that ends the third quarter. Quarter, and it's 24 to 3. Just a crushing game. Right after the third quarter, Penn State gets a yet another field goal, 27 to 3. And with the final seconds of the game, Loyola, Loyola sorry, gets a touchdown and they convert on a two point conversion. This is the Bruins, and it's 11 to 27. Penn State runs the game out. And so Garbers, he did not play in this game. And Loya gets that touchdown at the end, kind of gets some life, but just nothing really for UCLA. And they're hoping to get back on track against Minnesota. But I'm going to say again, the same exact prediction versus Minnesota at 6 p.m. on Saturday. I think 28 to 10, Minnesota wins. I, they played against USC. They beat USC. They're going to come out firing in L.A., play well, and probably win. P.J. Fleck knows how to beat a good team, and UCLA really isn't a good team, in my opinion. I just don't see really anything happening. I, I, I This game is just not at all what I expected. And so Penn State themselves, they, they just crushed. And so we'll see. Maybe they'll crush against USC. I don't think so. That's the end of our college football recap here on Catching Up with Carter. My name is Carter Kirkhavel, and you're listening here on 88.5 HD2 Saddleback College Radio. We'll be back in just a few minutes after the song Pursuit of Happiness by Kid Cudi and Self Love by Metro Boomin with our full NFL look talking about the Minnesota Vikings especially. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Here, enjoy these quick songs. Hello and welcome back to 88.5 HD2 Saddleback College Radio, catching up with Carter. College radio lovers unite. Our new Discord server is your all-access pass to request songs, chat with DJs, and connect with the local community. Every Saddleback Radio show has a home there, and so do you. Visit jazz885.org and click on the Discord link to join. If you join that Discord, I'll be on there. You can ask me questions there and give your takes. And so we're going to get right into our NFL matchups for this last week. And so on Thursday night, it was Buccaneers versus Falcons. And so we had a prediction, 28 to 21. Buccaneers were going to win. And the final score was 30 to 36. The Falcons won. So that prediction was... Try it was pretty trash. It was not a very good prediction there. And so in this game, just watching it, Kirk Cousins, he is an, an immensely good player. He is doing a very, very good job. And for the Buccaneers, they they still played well. They put up 30 points. They had a good game. And same with Baker Mayfield. He's a, he's a great player. I just watched actually a video of him going undercover like Eli Manning just the other day. Very, very funny video. You should check it out on YouTube. But for the Buccaneers, they're still on track. They're still still pretty good. And so even at 3-2, and two, Still good in the Falcons there, three and two as well as they were two and two this last week, having a good just just game here. And moving into Sunday, football was London, 6 30 a.m. game. And this is the game I really want to talk about. It's Jets versus Vikings. Vikings are now five and zero on the season. Prediction was 27 to 24. Vikings, final score, 17 to 23. The Vikings did win. So that prediction was nice. So that prediction was good. Vikings. I just want to talk about them a little bit. Sam Darnold for MVP. That is that is the biggest thing for me. I love the Vikings this year. They are such a good roster. Very good built team. Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson will be back. Aaron Jones, Sam Darnold. On the defensive side, you got Harrison Smith. Just Harrison Phillips, too, at the defensive tackle spot. Just all around. Very, very good team. And I, I just I really like them a lot. I, I think that they're gonna be one of those NFC contenders that no one really thinks about, and they should think about them. They are a very, very good team, and they need – they they really, 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 really want this championship. Minnesota, they have, they have been struggling these past just years forever. My mom always tells me – she's a big Vikings fan – that she's been struggling for 50 years watching this team, and so – 
hopefully this is the year. I I, I truly think this might be the year. I I I'm just I, that's my prediction here. I, I early prediction Vikings to the Super Bowl. I'm just okay. That's gonna age horribly, but. I said it here. Moving into our 10 a.m. games, Panthers versus Bears. I had a prediction, 28 to 14. Panthers. I don't know why I keep thinking the Panthers are going to win. This game is a crusher. Bears won 36 to 10. So the Bears, they just crushed it. They they won by 26 points. Caleb Williams played all right. I mean, they they played well and Bears took it. Going to the next Ravens versus Bengals, best game of the week. Prediction 28 to 24. If Ravens win, and the final score is 41 to 38. The Ravens win. So our prediction was. Nice. Very good prediction there. And for the Ravens, they played a great game. The Bengals did too. Just back and forth all around. And Justin Tucker kicking that game winning field goal. Just a just a great game all around. And the Ravens, they're three and two. Bengals are one and four this season. They're at the same record as the Panthers this year. Just crazy. They're gonna be a wild card team to even think about. They're, they're gonna be great later this season, even with a lower record. Moving to our next Bills versus Texans. Prediction 27 to 20. Texans were going to win, and the 23 to 20, Texans did win. So that prediction was nice. It was a pretty good prediction there. And the Texans, they just played well and really it was a close game. And the Bills, too, they they fought hard, but Texans got the win. They're four and one now on the season. Just a good game all around. Colts versus Jaguars next. Prediction 31 to 21. Colts win. And the final score was Jaguars won 37 to 34. So that prediction was Try. Just a, a trash prediction there. And the Jaguars, they win a game here. They finally win. They're not 0-4 anymore. They are 1-4 on the season, so they do get that win. And so, I mean, I, I can't really say anything. The Colts just did not look good. And Jaguars as well, they, they didn't – I mean, they won. But, I mean, this game in general wasn't that – it was it was a high-scoring game, of course. But it, was, it just wasn't – it just wasn't, like, two good teams, really. It was just – it was just – Score after score, it just really wasn't anything. Moving into the next Dolphins versus Patriots, prediction 17 to 14 Patriots win, and it was 15 to 10. The Dolphins won. So Patriots, they really gotta step it up here. Is really now Drake May, he's gonna be going in. And so that prediction, it was Try. It's a bad prediction on my part. Is the Dolphins, they got the win, and I mean the Dolph I just I just don't get it. Snoop Huntley, okay, he gets the win, but barely. I mean, it's it's just not not really good for the Dolphins on that side. Moving to the next, Browns versus Commanders. Prediction 34 to 14, Commanders won. And the final score was 34 to 13, Commanders won. So that was a perf- almost a perfect prediction. It was nice. Very, very good prediction there. And so the Browns themselves, they really just are, are horrible. They, they need, they need to bench Deshaun Watson. Get him out of there. He is awful. Just a horrible, horrible quarterback, in my opinion. And so going into the 1 p.m. games, Giants versus Seattle was the only game we had in the prediction. 28 to 17, Seattle wins. And no, that was not what happened. 29 to 20, the Giants won. So that prediction was Try. just a horrible prediction. And going into Sunday night football, I really don't even want to talk about this Seattle game. I just want to move on because Seattle did not play well. Giants, they really, they really just did. I mean, I don't, I don't even want to want to say that Daniel Jones played well, but he did. And they they lost because of a, a blocked game. Blocked field goal. That was really how they lost this game. And going into Sunday Night Football, Cowboys versus Steelers, it was delayed. Prediction 24 to 14, Cowboys won. And the Cowboys did win 20 to 17, winning only by three. I said it was going to be closer than people predicted. And Cowboys did win, but I mean, Dak did not look good. TJ Watt kind of crushed. And still, though, Steelers struggling a little bit against the Cowboys. But I mean, the Cowboys should be up by a lot more than three points. It was only 20 to 17. And two to two, two and two on the record before coming into this game, and now only three and two. They should be better than that, in my opinion. Moving into the Monday Night Football, Saints versus Chiefs. I said prediction, upset of the week, twenty-four to twenty, Saints win, and the Chiefs won again. And I can't stop saying the Chiefs are going to lose. I, I mean, I mean, I keep saying they're going to lose, and they just win. And I, I don't know if it's me. I feel like I should just stop talking about the Chiefs and just be like, whatever happens, whatever happens. Like, okay, you can take your five and zero and move on because this point they win every game and so that was the final 13 to 26 we're gonna move into our matchups for this coming week we went through thursday night already we said the niners are gonna win so we're gonna go straight into sunday football london game 6 30 a.m jaguars versus bears 
Just a, just not a good game. I mean, in my opinion, just not a, not a good game at all. And so the Bears, I think they're going to win 27-24, to 24, but I think it's going to be closer than people believe. I, b- I bet people are going to think the Bears are going to win. But Jaguars did get a win last week. Trevor Lawrence looked okay, so let's see. Maybe this game will be good. I, I, I think it might be good in the morning. Going into the 10 a.m. games, Commanders versus Ravens. Prediction 38-34, to 34, Commanders win. I think this is game of the week. Commanders are a great team. I think they're going to go 5-1 and one on the season so far, and I think the Ravens, they're going to fall in this one because Jaden Daniels is Jaden Daniels, and he is playing out of his mind. Moving into the next, Texans versus Patriots. Prediction 31-14, to 14, Texans win. I, I think they're going to crush on offense and on defense. They're just going to crush the Patriots. Moving into the next, Buccaneers versus Saints. Prediction 31-10, to 10, Buccaneers win. I think the Bucs... We'll take it. Saints, they're struggling. They're gonna have they're gonna have Spencer Rattler at quarterback as Derek Carr. He's hurt. So this game is done. I I think this game's already done. I think the Buccaneers are gonna take this one. Next, Browns versus Eagles. Same type of thing. I think the Browns, they they just don't have anything because Deshaun Watson, horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And so the Eagles, 24 to 7. I think they're gonna win by multiple scores, but I don't think they're gonna score a ton, ton of points. I think 24 is the max they're gonna get. Moving to the next last 10 a.m. game, Colts versus Titans. Prediction, 21-17 Colts. I keep giving the Colts the benefit of the doubt, but I think they're going to win this game. The Titans are not that good, so I think they're going to win. I I truly think they're going to win. Moving into 1 p.m., Falcons versus Panthers. Prediction, 24-10 Falcons win. I think they'll win, but I think it'll be a little bit closer. Just just in my opinion, I think the Panthers score a little bit. I mean, Chubba Hubbard looked okay, so... I think that'll be good. And 1 p.m., another really good game, Lions versus Cowboys. I think prediction 28-27. to 27. Cowboys win. I think this will be a very close game, just like the Commanders won. But I think the Lions will take it. Sunday Night Football, Bengals versus Giants. Prediction 24-14, to 14, Bengals win. Hopefully they get another win. I mean, they, they're just, just struggling on this, on this season because of all those losses. And moving into our last game, Monday Night Football, Bills versus Jets. Prediction 27-17, to 17, Bills will win. I think the Jets still, they're struggling a ton. And so that is it. That is the end of our NFL recap. Again, my name is Carter Kirkhaven. You're listening to Catching Up with Carter here on 88.5 HD2. You're listening to No Idea by Don Tolliver. And then we have a special little talk about Saddleback football to close. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back in just a minute. Hello and welcome back to 88.5 HD2 Saddleback College Radio. My name is Carter Kirkhaven. You're listening to Catching Up with Carter. The annual Saddleback Film Showcase at the Newport Beach Film Festival is playing soon. The best short films, documentaries, and TV projects made by Cinema TV Radio students will be screened Sunday, October 20th. The program begins at 11.15 a.m. at the Regal Edwards Big Newport Theater. Arrive by 11 to grab a seat. This year's special presentation features nine exciting projects created by CTVR students. For ticket information, visit NewportBeachFilmFest.com. Go check that out. Very, very fun event. I'm hoping that I can go as well. And so we're going to get right into a little quick Saddleback football recap. We didn't recap it during the college portion. Wanted to leave it for the end so we could talk more about it. So Saddleback football, they got their fourth win against San Diego Mesa in a close battle, winning 26-24. to They got their fourth win on the season. Saddleback college football doing a great job. Trey Kikuk led the team in passing and rushing with 136 passing yards, two touchdowns, and 46 rushing yards. For receiving, Dane Benedicts had 53 yards with one touchdown. We actually interviewed Dane Benedicts just a week, a few weeks ago, and the show just came out. It's on SBCN over on Saddleback College TV. Go check that out. Dane Benedicts and Amar J. Black, two wide receivers. We interviewed them, but Dane Benedicts, he had 53 yards and a touchdown here. Saddleback's next game is not this weekend, but next at Palomar on October 19th at 6 p.m. Make sure to go and root them on. It is going to be at Palomar, but their home game will be after that. So make sure to support your Bobcats. And that is the end of our show here today. We recapped all 49ers, all Rams, all Chargers, all the NFL. I really shouldn't go through each team because we recapped all of them. So just make sure to check in every week here from 10 to 11 a.m. where we can recap all all of the NFL, college football, and giving some takes. As this coming week, we will see what happens. We'll see if my predictions are. Nice. Or if they are. Try So we'll see. Maybe my predictions will be good. 
Maybe they won't be. Maybe your team will win. Maybe your team won't. So we'll be back next week on Thursday at 10 to 11 a.m. Again, my name is Carter Kirkhavel. Next, you're going to be listening to Do I Sound Like Your Dad with Francis Starr. Very, very good show from 11 to 1 o'clock. Make sure to check that out. Very, very fun. Thank you so much for listening again here on 88.5 HD2 Saddleback College Radio. We have one more song for you, Walking on a Dream by Empire of the Sun, and we'll get right to Francis Starr.